What does filmed for IMAX mean? It isn't just a movie that'll look great on IMAX's screens. It means that hiding from a sandstorm feels like fear in every flicker. And every triumph is felt in every sound wave. And the things we've only imagined, you can truly experience those too. That's what filmed for IMAX means. Get tickets to experience Dune Part 2 now and IMAX's exclusive expanded aspect ratio. Okay, everybody, we took this week off, but we're going to share one of our classic episodes. Enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome to the All, All Too, Too Real 2 Podcast. Mm. Okay, so anyways, yeah. um, my name is Michael E. Cullen II. Yes, that's Michael E. e. Cullen, Cullen II. The second. And with me as always is... <clears throat> Nobody, nowhere man. Nowhere, man. I don't. I don't know who I am right now, anymore. I believe you. See, so you look a lot like my friend Matt. Yeah, Matthew Haas. I Matt, don't know if I'm that person anymore. Matthew the 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 the, the dog balls Haas. The dog balls. Wait, Haas. no, that's what? not right. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, um. I hope that's not my nickname. No, it's not. Um. We are <clears throat> currently. Just got done watching a spectacular film called Van Wilder, Freshman Year. It is the prequel to National Lampoon's Van Wilder. This movie came out in 2009, Matt. Yep. Do you think the title was appropriate? I... Thought it would be better if it was called Freshman Beer because of like the whole party college, you know, thing. What, know. what do you mean? You know, like the whole stereotypical party, like, you know, college, you go go to college and you have dorm room parties and you drink beer and you smoke up and what's, you know. what's, what's beer? Beer is like an alcoholic beverage, you know, like a. Can you draw me a picture of beer? Yeah. Uh, not really, no. Okay. I mean, I don't know how I'd draw a picture of beer. Because I'm confused. You know, it's beer. Oh, beer. Be, you know, beer, be, beer. Yeah, like be, E-E-R. Yeah, what did you think I was saying? I, I thought it was beer, like with an A, and then I was like, that's pronounced bear. Why would... Who has college bears? Um, Some colleges have bears as their mascot. Well, yeah, as mascots, but not as a party. I mean, I, I hope not. Bears just don't show up at parties. <laughs> <laughs> but at least... <laughs> It might be kind of fun. Not those kind of bears. Oh, yeah. by the way, there's lots of homophobic uh, humor yes, in this movie. Exactly. So that's why I'm doing that. Um, yeah, might be kind of fun for some guys. You know, I mean, I don't know. Um, anyways, um, so do you? Yep. <laughs> be all you can be. Yeah. That's another good saying for this. Yeah, movie. for this movie. Anyways, um, so <clears throat> this movie was directed by Harvey Glazer. I thought you were going to say Harvey Weinstein for a Wait, second. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not Harvey well. Weinstein. No. <laughs> uh, ha- this guy uh, has also directed Me. the most famous movie that he's directed besides this, because I've never really heard of any of the other ones, is Kicking It Old School starring Jamie Kennedy. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Uh, what's that movie about? It? 
I forgot what that movie's about. Um, I think it's about a guy who's like in a in like a coma and he wakes up and he's still kicking it old school, like with old school type. I don't know. I I, I remember watching it once, but wasn't there a movie where he was in called like Malibu something? Malibu's Most Wanted. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was another horrible it was bad jamie it was kennedy a, movie. it was a bad movie okay um, but jamie kennedy if you'd like to be on our podcast yeah, we, we would love to have, movie. we would love to have you i mean you you can you can handle it you did make a movie called heckler which was a documentary about people heckling and it was oh, really wow. good i liked it so anyways um <laughs> the mask part two yeah <laughs> so we'll get the, we'll get to that someday. son of the mask sorry son yeah. of the mask we'll get that we'll get to that movie someday okay yeah it was uh it starred uh jonathan bennett from nearby Rossford, Ohio. We're yeah. currently in Toledo, Ohio, if you haven't been aware of that before by listening to this podcast. And if this is the first episode you're listening to, please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts yes. or iTunes or whatever the fuck they're calling it this week. Sorry. Anyways, um, <laughs> did I let you know that that bothers me, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. That they keep changing their yes. name or format or whatever. Whatever the fuck it is. Okay. They, they can't decide. <laughs> no. But anyways, um, it also stars uh, Kristen Cavallari. Yeah. Jonathan Bennett, by the way, was no is known from movies such as Mean Girls, mm-hmm. and um, the uh, direct video prequel to Dukes of Hazard, mm-hmm. and many other movies, which I'm not looking up, and you can do that yourself <laughs> if you'd like. <laughs> See, this has gone beyond us informing you about the movies. Now <laughs> yeah. now it's just us ranting about the movies. You can do your own homework. Yes. I mean, Jonathan, um, I did meet once. Oh, yeah? Back really? when I was, like, younger. Okay. Which is any time before now. <laughs> okay. That's a very wide open here of when you met him. And he was a very nice gentleman. Okay. Anyways, um, so... So, anyways, um, yeah, he went to Rossford High School. Did I you meet him before? This I believe, movie? No, maybe he didn't. I, mean, I can't remember which he went. But what's that? Did you meet him before this movie came out? Yes. Yes, I did. So you met him pre Van Wilder fan. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Uh huh. <clears throat> this movie also features Kurt Fuller as the dean, Charles Reardon. Um, Kurt Fuller, you will know from like everything. Yeah, he's been in, like, so many movies. Yeah, and he has a twin brother who's an actor as well. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. Um, I believe they're twins. They're at least brothers. Um, <laughs> and the uh, female lead of this movie is Kristen Cavallari, who you know from Kristen Cavallari type stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's very descriptive. Um, yeah, you know from, like, Veronica <laughs> Mars and... Uh, you know, Veronica Mars and yeah, stuff like and, that. Um, and also on um, The Hills, right? Think, was she on The Hills? I you think said so. so when they I, think, did, I think so. Let me see. Self. Yeah, she was on that. When they did that joke about, yeah, about like, the you want to watch Mean Girls? And the guy's like, no. Yes, she was on. I'm trying to figure out where people know her from. Because she's one of those people that was famous after I gave a crap about people. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay. Yeah, she was on The Hills. Wow. She was on The Hills. After and, I gave a crap. I'm joking, people. <laughs> wow. This movie's made me bitter. It is. It's a bad yeah. movie, guys. It's um, really bad. Yeah, no, she she was on The Hills for years. Yeah. I don't think I've ever watched a single episode of that show. I'm not bragging either. I'm not doing that thing. No. Like, oh, I haven't watched Game of Thrones. I'm so cool. But, yeah, go fuck off. Isn't no, the, Hills, just... the Hill, I mean, she played herself on that. That's one of those like <clears throat> pseudo reality shows. Is that shows. what it was? So yeah. it wasn't a real show then? It was... No, it was like a reality oh, show. Okay. Yeah. It was kind of wrong, like, you know, I don't know if it was before or after, like, Jersey Shore and that shit. Yeah. So she played herself. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I, I have watched an episode or two of Jersey Shore. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. I, I had to follow around Angelina Pavarnik from that show. Oh, yeah. For, like, right. two days for a radio station. <laughs> so what, you watched it just to get, like, more familiar with her work or whatever yeah or? it was after i met her too oh okay. yeah i didn't i don't know she was very attractive and nice but anyways she, she gave me a bunch of like behind the scenes gossip of a show that i had Ooh, never seen wow. so i didn't really care i was like okay yeah so, so 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 you guys had to film that like four times okay that's cool um yeah i remember what you're talking about but anyways if you're listening angelina and you'd like to be on the show we are facebook friends you can find me on facebook anyways um <laughs> 
Just burn those bridges. Yes. <laughs> All no. no, she's she seems cool. Anyways, um, so I just don't. I mean, I think she was she she left the show after a bit too, and she oh, really? came back from time to time. But she was used to getting big fights with everybody on there and oh, stuff. So she was kind of the the, the like the wild card, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, you know, Charlie wild card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Ooh, that's okay. Um, so uh, what happens in this glorious? <sighs> prequel to van wilder that we definitely needed to have somebody jonathan bennett who does a decent job in this movie i will give him that he's not quite ryan reynolds but then again ryan reynolds isn't quite ryan reynolds in van wilder because yeah. i really don't care for that movie that much that's just my own it's one of those dumb party yeah. college movies i mean yeah. i never and really liked them so basically i think this movie okay you take police academy mm-hmm you take Van Wilder, take some American Pie, and some like Porkies and stuff like that, and throw it all in a yeah. blender, and make it in two thousand nine. You get this movie. Yes. This movie. So <clears throat> I'm having trouble actually remembering what happened because it was such a, a trippy experience watching this movie. So like, it starts off with Van Wilder giving like his high school like. Um, valedictorian speech or whatever. Well, he was introducing the valedictorian. That's right. He was introducing the valedictorian who gave him a blowjob. He was doing some valedictorian Which, type that, stuff. Anyway, speaking um, of police academy, that actually happened in police academy. Did it? So, yeah, someone did that. Gave, gave somebody a blowjob. Like under, under it's been a long time since I've seen it. I'm not sure police which academy. police academy yeah. one, but one of the movies. So mm-hmm. they could have got that idea. So then yeah. he's doing the whole thing where he's saying really suggestive words that correspond with what's going on and of course you know you the audience is supposed to be like aha you get it he said the word come <laughs> he said head you know or some <laughs> stupid fucking bullshit anyway yeah. so um i'm sorry i'm just really angry but um <clears throat> deep, then, breaths, deep breaths we can so make then it. she after she's done with him and then she's now the valedictorian and then but they don't even have her speak and then it's next they move on to the next scene so okay yeah and then his dad is there you know seeing him off and they're they were supposed to go to Amsterdam together, which is kind of a weird. Well, okay. they're probably just good, good buds. I guess so. Yeah, you know, nice relationship. But his dad has to work because he's owns like a like sand company, I guess, and some this, kind of company. Some guy from Dubai named Did he just say his name? Name was Sheikh Mohammed or Khalid Sheikh Mohammed? I think he just said Sheikh okay, Mohammed. Okay, which is, doesn't make sure. any sense because no one's name is Sheikh. That's a title, so that's like. Well, maybe he was just calling. saying that you know. Okay, because I mean, I, I've. I mean, I guess you would say something like, hey, this is my friend Colonel Sanders. Right. You know, I'm just saying, you know, because me and Colonel Sanders are like this. Right. Folks, you know, just in case you're wondering. <clears throat> I'm really good friends with a dead dude. Cool. Wait. Anyways. <laughs> so the, the Sheikh Mohammed from Dubai, I think he said Dubai, was it? Um, he wants a bunch of sand. So and his his company's the one that won the contract to do it. And it's probably going to make, you know, a bunch of money. So he's got to go. To work and um, <clears throat> Van is saying, "Hey, you know why? Why can't I just skip college and just go to work with you? I already pretty much know the business as it is. You know, it's easy learning curve." And then his dad goes on this whole thing about tradition that every single Wilder has gone to this school or graduated from the school since how many generations? And I was, I think he was the fifth one. Yeah, we're going he, to be he, the he's, fifth he's one. He's Vance Wilder the fifth. <laughs> So, you know, you, you don't throw away tradition or whatever type of, you know, balk at it. So then, you know, you pretty much keep your, fa- you know, keep the family name, you know, good reputation, I guess is the word. So, you know, he sends his son off to this kind of military school type of, um, is it a military school or is it just, is it just that? I think the school just has an ROTC. But he's the dean though, so that the dean. The dean is part of this military so, world or something. I don't know. So I don't know yet. Because so, I don't remember anything about that in the first movie, but it's been years since I've seen it. Yeah, the first I don't remember movie. anything about no. the ROTC, like no. running the school. But, um, <clears throat> so that, that's, um. And I mean, the, 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 the whole thing with this connection to the other movie makes no sense, anyways, because they have more modern conveniences in this movie than they did in the previous one. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, like iPhones and yeah. whatnot and stuff. So if it takes place before the other events, <clears throat> they, they have think. better technology. So I don't know. They didn't think it's through. Um, they didn't. Um, I mean, it was a cash grab. It was, yeah. And the, the dean, of course, is the dude, I forgot his name, but the really famous guy that you've seen in probably every Oh, movie. yeah, Kurt, Kurt Fuller. He he plays the dean who's like this stereotypical hard ass, 
you know, rule book, go by the rules type of thing. He doesn't like Van Wilder because he doesn't like his father for some unexplained reason. They went to school together. Um, my guess is that Van Wilder's father was just as much of a douchebag as he is. So, you know, it's easily to, you know, rub someone the wrong way uh, when you have that kind of terrible yes. personality. But um, so he's got it out for him. And they the, the school is very, like, conservative. Like, like, you're not even allowed to kiss. Like, they actually have rules, like signs. No kissing, no drinking, no partying. I, I've, I mean, I've heard of like, you know, basic rules when it comes to like dormitories and stuff like that. Like, no, no drinking, no drugs, you know, type of thing. No parties. Um, you know, segregate the sexes, stuff like that. But I never heard of any school saying you can't kiss. That seems like a weird type of rule. But um, yeah, I, I, it's it's made up for this fucking. Movie, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. I don't think you can legally even do that. I mean, I don't know. I don't but... think you can legally outlaw kissing. Right. <clears throat> so um, I don't know. I mean. At least not in 2009. Yeah, in two, maybe in 2019. Since yeah. we're going backwards. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so because ev- eventually we'll, we'll we'll be like the like the town in um, Footloose and you can't yeah. dance. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, nationwide and uh, <laughs> and, uh <laughs> nationwide is on your side. Nationwide, if you would like to sponsor <laughs> us, uh, we can sing that every freaking time we talk about you <laughs> in that beautiful tone we just did. Yes. Nationwide is on your side. Whoa. Whoa, that was dope. That was a nice little re- vibrato yeah. there. Like you, you almost sounded like Ethel Merman there. Wow. The <laughs> Nationwide is on your side. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that thoroughly, Matt. Um, the Mountain Dew's kicking in. All right. So, um, yes. <laughs> anyway, so they, they, you know, he wants to have a party, but he can't. And then he. He goes into his um his dorm room. He breaks down the wall because his room is too small. Oh, that was nice. He breaks, he breaks down, down the wall because, because his room is too small. <gasps> and, Ooh, and his dog has big balls. <laughs> yeah, he finds a dog later yeah, on. Anyways. So he breaks down the wall, and then he meets his roommate, who is a white guy with a Jamaican accent for some reason. Yeah, named name, named Farley Marley or something. Farley, yeah, Farley Marley, who is a pothead. It's like really, guys. And, Stereotype. Um, yeah, big time. But he's a white guy with a Jamaican accent, mm-hmm. which means either he's from Jamaica. They said he is. Oh, they did the actually at one say point, that. At one point, uh, Van says to somebody, "He's from Jamaica." Was he joking though, or did he actually? I don't mean know. That? He okay. might. Have, yeah, because he does that. He jokes a lot. Yeah. But anyway, <clears throat> he's got this stereotypical Jamaican accent, and he's a stereotypical pothead, and. Uh, he just like you know is all high and he's like, oh, what's going on? And Van Wilder's like, oh, I'm your new roommate or whatever, dorm mate. And then like they somehow clean up the room really fast and now it looks really nice. Like within a day, I'm like okay, I guess Van Wilder's really good at construction. And um, and then they want to go to this party and then they meet this this other dude whose name is You Doom Fuck Fuck. And when they introduce them, they play really stereotypical Asian music as soon as they open the door and they show him. Yeah, by the way, Kurt Fuller doesn't have a brother. I was just looking that up, oh. and I thought he did. I was mi- I was mistaking him with another actor. So, oh, that's but, fine. But yeah, I, j- I just wanted to correct that so I didn't seem stupid mm-hmm. to people. I'm not going to edit it out, so you do know that I make mistakes. Yeah. I would admit to my mistakes, yeah. unlike Some, certain people. Yeah. Trump. Anyways. Yeah, um, you want to take over now from, from the you doom fuck? Okay, so he meets he meets that guy, um, who we find out something about later. Yeah. Anyways, um, so this movie sucks. Anyways, um, yeah. I mean, I've seen worse. Yeah, Inspector Gadget too. Yeah. Um, is worse. Yeah. I don't know though, really. To be honest. I mean, the, the, we also have his main, the main like. Other antagonist is played by Steve Talley, um, who you will know as Dwight Stifler in two of the American Pie Presents films. Yes. He basically plays in those movies a Van Wilder type character because <laughs> he's like the kind of ceremony, you know, party guy. And yeah, those movies are actually better than this movie. Yep. Can't believe I'm saying that. They are. Yeah. A movie that made me wish for 
American Pie Presents Naked <laughs> Mile. <laughs> I couldn't even finish that movie. No. But it is better than this movie. Yeah, it is. Yes. It's actually funny in parts. Mm-hmm. This one is too sometimes. I will give them that. I did chuckle a few times. There's a few lines. Yeah. But the thing is, it's one of those chuckles that I don't even remember what I chuckled about. Yeah, either do At I the can't... moment, they were funny. But right now, I do not remember much of the film. So you want me to keep talking? Maybe, then? <laughs> maybe for a minute. I'm just trying to think here. Um, so they meet... They meet you, you don't you don't fuck, and he brings <laughs> and he brings a goose or a duck for dinner, yeah, yeah. But for you know, the party. Another stereotypical thing, and he he has a hatchet with him, yes, <clears throat> that he cuts the head, the head off of the duck or whatever, mm-hmm. and then he's talking about wanting to. Co- That's right, because they they were going to throw a party, but no one showed up, and then this guy showed up, and then <clears throat> he's got uh, you has a. Like an old, like porn magazine from the seventies, like nineteen seventy nine yeah, or play something. Playpen magazine. That's right, Playpen, which, which is the stereotypical uh, TV um, magazine when they can't use Playboy oh, or Penthouse. They okay. come up I with got Playpen. You. Playpen, I got it. Yeah, that's cool. I'm pretty sure that was one of the uh, <clears throat> one of the several magazines that you know, like uh, Al Bundy used to read on Married with Children oh or something. Yeah, I love that show. Mm-hmm. Sort of. I mean, it's terrible, yeah. but it's good. It's good, terrible. Anyway, so uh, he 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 wants to. He's looking at the mag. He, um, Van Wild, Van, you know, he's kind of impressed by you know it's like nineteen seventy nine copy, and then he finds some another ad to like a toga party or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and then then they go to this uh, they go to this place. I I, I remember this part. Mm-hmm. They they think it's going to be a toga party, but it was like a Roman Romans party or something like that about yeah, the right. Bible. And it was like a purification. A thing. Romans party. I guess yeah. they're gonna read the book of Romans. Yes. Wow, I just got it. Yeah. Wow. And so they, they show up and there's you know, there's there's no drugs, sex or alcohol let, allowed in this college and stuff. So they you know, they, they meet this these prudish girls there, you know, led by this character of Eve, played by Meredith Gia Grande. Gian Grande, Gian Grande, G I A N G R A N D E. Okay, whoa. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Grande, I guess. Grande. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, she's a cute girl with big lips. And um, <laughs> and they're all praying on their knees facing the walls, which is really creepy. Yeah. And uh, so basically they, they get they get like sacramental wine thrown on them for some reason. Which I'd never heard of. That being a Christian as some thing. kind of like thing and everything, but then so then the next the next day, Van and his little cronies go around and steal all the vibrators from all of the women on campus for some reason. Well, all of the the church women. Yeah, is it all of them? Because, yeah, because because okay. they made a big thing about how they didn't yeah. have sex or whatever. But they but they were all so they broke and entered into these women into their dorm rooms and watched them masturbate. So and stole their possessions and spied on them. So uh, so we got a m- so, many so, crimes. So we got like stalking or yes. or, or uh, well we got stalking, breaking and entering, breaking and entering, uh, theft. Theft and also like a sexual thing, voyeurism. There yeah. you go. So okay. it's a good so, four crimes right there. Yeah. Just like in um uh you know um American band camp. Pie yeah. Presents band camp. Yeah, you know, let's which, just which we will release eventually, but um I don't know if we have by the time this comes out. But um you know, yeah, they, they um well they, they had several uh, crimes committed in that. I'll give you a hint. There was some um poison. Yes, right. There was poison in that. Well, yeah. you just listen to that one. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Oh. Anyway, so so they they get this you know wine on them and uh, they they steal all these they steal all these vibrators from the girls and then they rig them up with somehow underneath the pews that the choir, which is made up of these girls, are sitting on behind the uh, behind the preacher at church. Mm-hmm. And Van has inside of his, uh, inside of his, uh, um, I don't know what, what do they call that book? That you hymnal. Read? Hymnal. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I was, I was raised Catholic. That's what I was saying. Think... I wasn't raised. Yeah. I was. I never even went to church. Yeah. <laughs> I know more about this than you know. I went to church no. for years, and it's been been a few years, and I forgot what a <laughs> hymnal is. Anyways, they they uh, 
he brings his own hymnal, and it's got a little remote control in it that controls all of the vibrators but underneath But he doesn't there. have his – that's the thing. He caught the hymnal that the woman threw. Oh, no. He gave it to her. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, I he had his was, own okay. – because he had his own behind his back. Oh, God. And, and when he was offered one by the mm-hmm. by the one girl, he says, oh, and that's okay. I brought yeah, my I own. Thought, I thought – No, was no, she, no. I was going to say, that seemed really kind of bad. Convenient. <laughs> like, we're just really bad um, – filming right there where it's like no i i noticed that too okay. they they did uh you know he did have it um right. so he makes it so when the preacher's doing his little sermon thing <laughs> his little yeah little sermon thing yeah yeah where he's telling you that sex is bad <laughs> it's pretty, a it's a scene yeah pretty much he said sin weird he said it like scene did he yeah it was weird anyways so um <laughs> I don't know. But uh but yeah, all of a sudden all the vibrators go off and somehow get all the girls off. <clears throat> okay. Th- through the through the wood of the pew. My whole thing for this scene is Okay, well for one, you're you're committing a sex crime already again, which yes. is like the second time you've done that in the movie. You're basically first, raping them. Because you're forcing <laughs> an orgasm mm-hmm. um when that's not what they were doing at that moment or pretend intending to do at that moment yeah they're at church so that's that's one point so sex crime the second sex crime so far okay and um second point <clears throat> unrelated to that is i can understand <laughs> having like an uncontrollable feeling and like you know having some kind of like bodily like reactions to that like an orgasm what i don't understand though is like how they were all taking off their clothes. Like I, I don't really it, get that part. It, like it's, it's, it seems a little I, bit like. I mean, I'm not a woman, but I'm just assuming that when a woman masturbates, she doesn't forget where she is. Well, plus two, they weren't masturbating. No, it was happening to them. If so they, I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. Even if that's the case, I just don't think that. I don't know. It's just me, but I don't know. <laughs> if 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 anybody would like to comment on that, um, feel free. Um, yeah, that's, that's a, <laughs> Yeah, okay. So <laughs> any woman who's accidentally had an orgasm in public, did you just completely just decide, hey, I'm just going to take off my clothes, just throw all caution to the wind here and just enjoy the moment type <laughs> of thing? Throw all caution and my clothes to the wind. Yeah, oh, wow. That was uh, a yeah. good one. Because they, they're, you know, they're sitting there going like, amen and hallelujah, and they're all breathing heavily and shit like that. And it's yeah. like, come on, guys. And again, like I said before, and he's, I, I've got this weird thing with sex humor, I don't know what it is. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not a prude at all when it comes to the actual thing it, itself. It bothers me to reason. a point. As I've gotten older, I kind of just ignore it yeah. almost. It's like you know, maybe when I was a teenager, it would have been titillating, pun, in, pun intended. But um, <laughs> the uh, but now I'm just kind of like you know, as I'm older, I'm like yeah, okay, whatever, just deal with it. Yeah, essentially. that's what I did. I'm just like okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the problem is though, this movie's like this for every scene though. Yeah. That's what the problem is. Um, so I don't. Do you want to take a break and get back to more of this, Matt? I'm sure. kind of. I'm. I'm. I'm kind of just. You know. I don't know something. So <laughs> we'll be right back, folks. No Outlet Live. Hey, I'm Jay Remy, host of No Outlet Live. If you're in a podcast that explore any and everything, check us out. We stream anywhere you listen or watch podcasts, or just type No Outlet Live one word in your Google search bar to find the show. Live Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook. No Outlet Live, your road to boredom ends here. Do you like Tessa? Do you think this will be a date that can last? Well, uh, she's not very articulate. How are you doing tonight, this evening? Tonight, this evening. Tonight, this evening, today. Mm-hmm. Right now. This morning, technically. Yeah, because it is after midnight, I believe. Yes. Is it? Yes, yeah, it's one sixteen a.m. Mm-hmm. as we record this. I am doing splendid. I just saw the most wonderful movie. <laughs> really? What? What is it? I can't do it next. Th- this movie... <laughs> I don't even know what this accent is. This movie was most wonderful. It was called Van Wilder. Freshman year. It was about this very studious man named Vance Wilder the Fifth. What did he study, pray tell? God damn it. I don't know, pray tell. I don't know, pray tell. What does make any sense? 
<laughs> As Mike just pointed out to me, <clears throat> we're on like minute 28 now of our podcast, and we've only talked about the first 15 <laughs> minutes of the movie, so we're going to have to speed this up a little bit. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be like a three-hour long podcast for an hour and a half movie. So. Pray tell. Yeah. <laughs> What does it mean to pray tell? I don't know what that means. I guess they're praying that you tell them. <laughs> but are you praying to them? Or are you praying to God or are you to guide to... them to tell you? Is there a saint to tell that because I'm praying to? If you're praying to the person, that's kind of weird. I'm praying to you <laughs> who's, to tell me something. Who's tell? I don't know. And why am I praying to him? <laughs> or her. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay, anyways. Um... So let's speed through this a little bit. Yeah. Because this movie is, oh my God. Anyways, um, yeah. what are some highlights? All right. So let's, we're gonna, or kinda, lowlights or we're whatever you want to call them. Speed through a little bit. So after this whole forced orgasm scene, uh, <clears throat> Dean finds all the devices and he knows it's Van, but he can't prove it. But he's got, you know, he's got his eye on him. I got my eye on you, you know, that whole thing. And um, he uh, decides that Van has to, and Van and also the pothead dude and uh, and and you and a bunch of other guys have to join the ROTC now. Yeah. And um, and their drill sergeant is um, I forgot her name. <clears throat> God damn it, she was main character in the movie too. Oh, uh, Kristen Cavallari's character. Yeah, what's her name? It's uh, her character's name is Caitlin. That's right, Caitlin. So Caitlin's yeah. the, their drill sergeant or instructor, or whatever. And by the way, no offense to anybody named Caitlin, but Caitlin is one of the most generic names for all these movies. I swear that there's people in these yeah. types of movies named Caitlin all yeah, the time. Yeah, it wasn't Bandcamp, wasn't I think so. It main... might have been. I don't know. But still, it's like... <laughs> I know. They just do like a Google search mm-hmm. or something. And um, so she's the drill start instructor. And then, of course, you know, there's got to be sex humor about that. Oh, you guys, private drill instructions. Ooh, you know, that stupid bullshit. And... um. And then and she, he has to clean a shitter. That's right. She well, it makes it look like he's masturbating, but it turns mm-hmm. out that he's cleaning a toilet with a toothbrush. And then he's doing his whole jokey thing because that's like all I he had does. preferred the vibrating kind. Is that what he said? God damn it! If he said that, I'm gonna kill him. Um, yeah, he did say it. Okay, well, I'm gonna kill him. So, and so then she makes him. FYI, folks, uh, Matthew Haas is not really going to kill no the char- the character of Van the character, Wilder, yeah. or Jonathan Bennett who played him. No, just just letting you know, if either one of those people end up dead, <clears throat> it's not me. I didn't it's not Matt. No, he did not kill a fictional character no. or an actor. No. <laughs> so. Uh, he does a stupid jokey bullshit, and and right as he's about to clean the really nasty toilet, it goes right into a next scene where it looks like it's poop, but it turns out it's meatloaf or some mystery meat that he's getting at the caf- school cafeteria. Yeah. And it looks absolutely disgusting, whatever it is. And then Dirk, Dirk spits in it. That's right. Dirk, Dirk is like the, you know, the douchebag dude. He spits in it, and then Caitlin shows up, and then... Um, Van does like a one-two punch and says, "Oh, well, Dirk even he even offered to switch lunches with me." So then now Van gets to eat the really nice, wholesome lunch that Dirk has. And now Dirk's got to eat his nasty. Spit. I don't know why he ate it. I, well, because um, Caitlin like wanted is like, "Oh, well, try it. Is it good?" Or I don't know. And it's just it's stupid. And it was disgusting. People like, do stupid things in these movies. I know that make no sense. They, uh, for example, like he he it's like he ate he could have ate around the spit. That's the other thing, too. He knew where he spit. There was other parts of the meatloaf or whatever gravy that weren't even there, but he... Or he he could have said, hey, I'm not hungry. Yeah. But no, he eats his own spit, and they got, of course, they got to do a close up on it because it's really disgusting. I'm like, come on. This movie's so fucking gross. It is. It's, there's so many gross scenes in this movie I hate. I hate this movie so bad. Then, okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's, let's talk about the gross scenes let's now. Speed, so, okay. Let's just yeah. get the gross scenes out of the way. Yeah. Okay. So, so in, in that way, we can kind of get through the plot as we do it. Because <clears throat> they are kind of intertwined. Yeah. All right. So later on, we have another gross scene where. Um, <sighs> They're trying to get back at the uh, at the dean, and he's getting a massage from the Asian girl, who's uh, the girlfriend of uh, you. Don't fuck. Oh, that's right. Because because yeah. you know, just like in the first Van Wilder, all the racial minority characters had to conveniently go out with people of their same race. <clears throat> yeah. Interesting. Okay, so that's and cool. um, so so uh, the girl goes the, to give him a massage, but the white Jamaican guy can have sex with a black woman. That's yeah. fine. 
That's because Cause he could do cultural. Pro- <laughs> he could do cultural appropriation and have sex with the. <laughs> but but the Asian character has to be with an Asian woman, just like he's pack- culturally uh, c- culturally <laughs> appropriating a woman too. Or yeah, something. well, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't know about that. No, I'm just joking. Um, we, but we, we don't want to go too far. No, in the crazy. No, like far left of like racism is actually non-racism if you kind of thing where they take it to like such an extreme <laughs> where it's like don't you dare eat sushi if you're white what okay that's, that's weird okay and, um, so don't you dare eat like any food we eat in america exactly, because it all comes exactly. from a different country let, let, let those businesses go bankrupt without mm-hmm. you know all the customers that go let's in there. not eat pizza because it's italian yeah. and you're not italian yeah. you know or whatever anyways the thing um, is, i'm from german and polish extract guys yeah, I don't like fucking duck blood soup. I'm never gonna eat that ever. I'm I'm sorry, it's not gonna happen. I'm I'm primarily German and Irish, and really, I don't like much German or Irish food. It sucks. So yeah, <laughs> the only good the only good for is is quote unquote German chocolate cake, and even that yeah. is actually not <clears throat> German and necessarily because they got the fucking coconut. Yeah. Why am I getting the history lessons here? Hey. They got the coconut from going into Africa and, like, you know, enslaving all these people. And then they brought the coconut back to Germany as, like, you know, a nice little cultural thing. Then they added that to the German chocolate cake. So technically German chocolate cake isn't actually even all the way German. It's partly African, but stolen from Africa. Hey, Sorry, Matt. guys. Hey, Matt. Sorry. What? If you had a, <laughs> if you had a chocolate lab... And a German Shepherd, and they had sex and had a baby. Mm. What kind of dog would it be? I don't know. A German chocolate. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry for the history so, lesson. Anyways, I'm, so- I'm, the Mountain Dew is really kicked in. I'm like, I'm, Ooh. I am amped up right now. So. It's code red. It's code red. Yeah. Mountain Dew. Anyway, so <clears throat> okay, basically though, they end up the dog gives him uh, the the dog that uh, mm-hmm. that uh, Van Wilder befriends in this movie is prime is, is a primary character in the second movie in the in the original movie I should say. He's a, <clears throat> he escaped <clears throat> from the the animal testing lab that was just right by the whatever, and then which probably explains why he has huge balls. But doesn't explain that they weren't missing a dog, and no one found it weird that he was hanging out with this dog on campus everywhere. Everyone could see him. No. Anyway, sorry, just the whole other. Okay, that would make too much sense. The school is weird. Um, yeah, and um, so the dog ends up uh, giving um, Kurt Fuller's character a blowjob yeah. because they put peanut butter on his uh, on, on his little soldier. Oh, God, <clears throat> the whole soldier and attendance bullshit. Mm. God. Uh, okay. By the way, this guy can only get hard by singing patriotic songs, yeah. which is really fucking weird. But okay, and um, My which I, there probably are some people like that, you know. So sweet land of liberty, <laughs> of the icing. <clears throat> Anyways, okay. So um, <laughs> he uh, yeah. So that happened. Anyways. Oh, his wife found out. They call his, his wife, wife comes in and is like, <laughs> she faints, of course. Yeah, she turned into the Swedish chef, I swear. Yeah. The what? Swedish chef? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> anyway, it's, um, so the, uh, so, so at the end, basically, he gets set up several times. There's another time where they get set up. Um, he's, Caitlin's supposed to do uh, guard duty one night, but she also has to have uh, dinner with her father. So Van volunteers to do the guard duty with his buddies. Why he couldn't do it just himself? It was if it was just going to be her doing it. Well, I don't understand why they, he needed a whole freaking party to do yeah, it. I don't, I mean, I, it's whatever sense. the fuck. I don't get this fucking movie. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> so they 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 bring their girlfriends along, which are a bunch of uh, you know. Sluts. Well, they were the cheerleaders, yeah. weren't they? From yeah. the beginning. That's right, mm-hmm. because there's a scene where yeah. he cuts their cheerleading outfits to be like skimpier or whatever yeah. at the and, football and, game. And, yeah, and the coach is played by the guy that played Enos and on the original Dukes of Hazard TV show, which brings us back to Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, that's weird. Which tells me, Matt, we're gonna have to watch Dukes oh, of Hazard. God. Okay. And he uh, was at the party too, the original party after the football yeah. game, which is weird. The coach is okay, <clears throat> but anyways, <sighs> the, so it ends up looking like Van had sex with the freaking main girl Eve of the purity group. 
who was there. Yeah, because she was trying to seduce him, and yeah. he, was, he was saying no and stuff. And and then, of course, the dean called in all the people to break, basically to catch them in the act. And it was weird because Van was actually the one telling everyone else to kind of chill out, like, hey, you know, we're taking this yeah, a little he too was, far type of thing. Like, yeah. Because he, he was now, like, learning to be responsible, you see. So. Yes. Which doesn't make any sense, though, because – and the original Van Wilder, he was like the wild child, and then by the end of that movie, he learned to be responsible. So does he do this every year where he starts off irresponsible, then becomes responsible, and then becomes irresponsible again for the next movie? Probably. Okay, because that there's that's not uh con- that's not a consistent type yeah. of thing, but okay. And I think in the first movie they talked about when he was actually in college originally and he was actually kind of a goody two-shoes when he first got there. Which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because so that just negates this whole thing. So they just movie. ruined the whole plot of Van Wilder. Yeah. Good, good job. Anyways, um, so this – uh, my chair is being weird, folks. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, so <laughs> I, I thought you all would like to know that. Um, the uh, So basically you get in trouble with that and everything, blah, blah, blah. Um. Van comes into this big meeting with the military type people and says that uh, we should have a we should have a we we should settle this once and for all. You know, winner takes all. The other has to leave campus with the uh, dean of the school. He can just do that. I guess. I don't know. Anyways, um, so the dean agrees to it. And uh, they. uh have this game which is kind of like a capture the flag sort of game mm. but it's uh capture the captain or whatever of the team sort of thing and van's dad comes in and he becomes the general of the one team and then the other the uh, kurt fuller's character is the other one and they have this fucking stupid little game and instead of uh actually playing the game van wilder has a big party and basically entices all of the people from uh kurt fuller's team to uh yeah do that and they all and they lose and by the way kurt fuller's character was gonna commit murder by shooting van wilder in the head yeah, it looked like it yeah he, 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 he held him with a gun and he was going to do it but then the dog yeah they gave him a blow and then he earlier. almost he almost was gonna shoot the dog i know that fuck wad piece of shit yeah but anyway it's like okay dude like how are you gonna cover up that murder i mean like i i don't whatever and then this movie doesn't make any sense so he loses right that what happened mike yeah so basically they win because the dog sits on the face of the fucking dude that's right with his big balls yeah Yeah. and um i don't know matt and and that's how it ended right no well the 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 movie ends then as um van and caitlin end up together we also found out that for some reason you was actually a guy named steve who had been put there to watch over his uh, watch over van by his father as a security agent or something. And I'm just like, what the fuck was that about? I don't understand. Came out of nowhere. And why would he need? Yeah. I don't get it. I don't know. But anyways, the, uh, the film ends and, um, Van, um, had, had left, uh, Dirk and Benedict. Benedict was also, he was kind of a chubby guy who was a friend of, uh, of Dirk who has like, a homosexual tendencies it seems throughout the movie yeah um he's probably gay and he's just not out of the closet and uh yeah so they they get tied up to each other and then gross shit happens yeah there's a lot of like this homosexual like a homophobia bullshit there was a lot of dumb homophobic yeah. humor in this movie i i totally forgot about that character wait, wait, which which is funny because you know um jonathan bennett came out of the closet after this movie was out i believe he's 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 uh you know the star of the movie and there's a lot of gay humor in the movie and he's maybe this movie like because it, it was such yeah. dumb humor he's like you know what fuck you guys yeah like, you know what i mean like <laughs> he did a lot of these types of movies though i mean i think over the years but anyways uh so um yeah but um basically though caitlin and van decide to you know finish college they go off together on 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 a um, golf cart off campus and they're about to go fuck 
basically. That's how it ends. Pretty much. Yeah. And then they do the credits, and they got There's bloopers. A bunch really? of bloopers, which were somewhat funnier than the movie, some of them. But um, <laughs> anyway, the whole movie's a blooper. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean. So bullshit. I don't know. Do you want to take another break, Matt? And yeah. then we'll come back and uh, talk about some reviews of the movie from the Internet Movie Database, yeah. etc. Yeah. Let's yeah. do that. All right. Hey, folks, this is uh, Michael E. Cullen II um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with Matthew Haas. We just wanted to tell you about our great, great podcast Super. called Super. It's called All Too Real. And on that show, what, what do we do, Matt? We, we watch biopics, and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not. So we, we, It's a lot we, more exciting than that, though. Yeah, so, 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 so we... We analyze the real story and the real story. Get it? Get it? Real. You know? Yeah, they're, they're spelled differently, yeah. folks. You can guess which one I said which way. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, so uh, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. Um, but we uh, talk about great, sh- great, uh, great movies like uh, Shattered Glass yes. and The Social Network and uh, A Futile and Stupid Gesture, among others. Um, those are some of the ones that we've covered so far, and uh. We're going to cover a lot more, so uh, please uh, subscribe on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you uh, find your great, fun podcasts, and be sure to share it with your friends. Do it. Do it. Do it. And make sure you're not afraid to get all too too real. real. Bye-bye. I just discovered something. What's that, Matt? Fans and friends and listeners of this podcast. Yes. We've been doing this show for over a year. Well, recording the show yeah. for over a year. And just now I discovered that I don't need to hunch over and speak into the microphone. I can actually lean back in my chair and hold the microphone in a comfortable position. Yes, you can. We've been doing this for over a year. Mm-hmm. We started in May 2018. Mm-hmm. It's July 2019. As we record this, yes. 14 mm-hmm. months. And I just discovered this right now. If I'd have known you didn't know that, I would have told you. Yeah. I've been hunching over this entire <laughs> fucking time for over a goddamn year. <laughs> God damn it. Sorry, Matt. It's okay. I feel bad now. That's all right. I feel like um <clears throat> feel like I lied to you. No, or you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Matt's gonna kill me after this. Nope. No. Folks, it's been really fun. <laughs> if I'm not on future episodes, I hope you enjoy my replacement. Whoever no, that is. Nobody can replace you, Mike. Yep. Yeah. Nobody. nobody can replace Ryan Reynolds, but Jonathan Bennett tried. <laughs> Anyways, um <laughs> <clears throat> Wow. So, um Yeah. Do you wanna take another break? No. <laughs> we just gave her. <laughs> No, do you want to? Um, do you want me to read some uh, nice little uh, user reviews here? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Here's a good, good one I found here, Matt. By Jazzero One, posted in October 23rd of 2010, right around Halloween. Anyways, um, see <laughs> what these, what these freaking dates that people. It's, I'm telling you, there's a connection between. Holidays. I mean, it is a whole week before the holidays. Well, true. (laughs) Maybe this one's a coincidence, but um, say this is actually pretty good. Mm, Okay. First, if anyone is watching a National Lampoon movie, which this National Lampoon didn't even give the rights to their name for this movie, so I'm just letting them know that whoever wrote this, um, for Oscar nominations is a fool. Second, it's actually fairly funny. They just followed the basics. Lots of TNA and douchebag, uh, I mean, a douchebag, a hero, and some chick between the douchebag and the hero, plus a lot of TNA. <clears throat> Third, the only thing I didn't like is the lack of creativity of the jokes. They basically took a page out of Ace Ventura and Adam Sandler. Really, no. Okay, Um, I think Ryan Reynolds really made the first one good because, well... It was Ryan Reynolds. And even though there have been a lot of National Lampoon movies, which, again, this is not a fucking National Lampoon movie, um, most of them were pretty dot, 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 lame. 
compared to this. Oh boy, the dot dot dots. Yes, here and we that go. Was a ten out of ten. Mm. <sighs> boy. Yeah. The Trump dot dot dots. Oh, no, right. no. What was that, Matt? The Trump write that one with the dot dot dots. I think he did. I think his he he loves those dots. I think uh, periods, whatever. I think Trump's IMDb name is Jazzero One. <laughs> yep, that sounds like him. That sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Here's a, another ten out of ten, Matt. All right, it's from uh, Pratika Rora. Pratika Rora. Okay. P r a t e e k a r o r a, Petika Aurora. That's how I'm pronouncing it. Sorry, it was written July 11th, 2009, just after Fourth uh, of July. Anyways, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. see, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It says hoped it was more wilder. It's a 10 out of 10 Get too, it. by the way. Yeah. Anyways, um. If you were one of those who complains that this movie, like other Van Wilder or American Pie movies, don't have any story, <clears throat> then I am sorry. The joke is on you for expecting them to have one in the first place. As long as they have some coherent plot and can keep my interest till the end, I am fine. This movie just did that. I am one of those who watches such movies for its slapstick sex comedy, and this movie is full of it. Surprisingly, there is not a lot of nudity. There seemed to be a lot to me. Anyways, uh, what do you... Uh, every scene... Maybe they didn't watch the... Uh, maybe we watched the um, unrated version or something. Maybe. Um, however, this movie basically tells you how Van Wilder started his journey at Coolidge. Let me also make it clear that this is not even remotely close to Ryan Reynolds' Van Wilder 2002. Although the girl, Kristen Cavallari, in this movie is hot, um, but of course Tara Reid and Amy Smart are different leagues. Hope to see more of her, Kristen Cavallari, in the series If You Know What I Mean. (laughs) <laughs> Fucking, uh, get it? He wants to see her naked, folks. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that. Did you catch that, Matt? Yeah, I got it. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, <laughs> go fuck yourself. The makers of the series have to work way harder than this if they want to be successful. Um, waiting for Van Wilder's sophomore year. Hopefully, it will be much wilder than this. Here is a ten, just for encouragement. So that really wasn't a great review of the movie. But they still gave it a 10 out of 10, just for encouragement. You know, usually, you know, they say A for effort, but that's not usually the case. They give you some encouragement, but they don't give you a full-on 100% grade. I mean, come on. Yeah. That's stupid. I don't know. I don't know either. Okay, here's the first bad one that I'm going to read here, Matt. All right. This is from uh, Canadian Spade. It's like David Spade's cousin or something, I guess. I don't know. Um, (laughs) It's his cousin, eh? Anyways, um, (laughs) one out of ten. Nothing to say. Want to know a better way to spend an hour and 38 minutes? Beat your head against the wall. You'll get more out of it. Why is there no option for zero stars? (laughs) That's all it says. Wow. That's great. Let Let me... read another one here okay i found it, this movie surprisingly has a lot of good ratings how i don't know but there's only like two one star ratings and this is the other one on imdb okay um this one is one out of ten by siren j a a dash seven nine seven dash three one three one Two, four. Okay. And this was uh, posted on uh, September 4th of 2010. Nowhere near a holiday that I'm aware of. Uh, 9-11. <laughs> Sorry. Is that a holiday? Really is that a holiday? So, sort of is. I don't know. <laughs> they commemorate it. I mean, I don't know. It's not really... <laughs> okay. Oh, God. 
All right, the, the, the headline for this is not funny, just stupid and annoying. I hate this movie. <laughs> I couldn't watch the whole thing. It's just stupid. When I saw the first scene with the blowjob, I just thought Police Academy. Yeah, there we go. See, yep. The movie looked for me like a cheap porno movie. The funny <laughs> scenes would maybe be funny if the people wouldn't act so bad. I mean... Everybody saw the girl coming out under the table after Van Wilder's speech, and everybody was like, it was acting like, oh, good, she was giving him a blowjob. Nice. <laughs> and the other cliches an Asian guy, a wannabe Jamaican guy, the military guys, an evil secret gay guy. That's just lame. Everything in this movie is unrealistic and stupid. I know that many comedies are a little unrealistic and stupid, but this one is too much. It's written for very dumb people. I like American Pie and some stupid teen comedies, but this one is like the Teletubbies. It's just sad. <laughs> what the fuck is that? It doesn't make any sense. And I don't have to mention that the main actor is totally irritating with his baby face and his nonstop stupid face ex- faces expressions. Hey, he's from like Ross, two miles away from here. So yeah. don't you dare. And okay, their their grammar is really bad in this. Mm. It says the main actor is totally irritating with his baby face and his nonstop stupid faces expressions. Faces expressions. <laughs> That's a new quote. Faces expressions. And um, my new favorite thing to say. Ever is uh, this one is like the Teletubbies. It's just sad. <laughs> well, how is the Teletubbies sad? I don't, I don't I know. I don't really watch the Teletubbies, I mean, but as far as I know, it was like a children's show. It yeah, happy. it was from from now on though. <clears throat> and there was a secretly <clears throat> gay <throat> one too, though. But maybe that, I'm shook. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> Jerry Falwell, Tinky Winky's yeah. homosexual, yeah. according <laughs> according to that dead bastard yeah (laughs) sorry Uh, rest Uh, in hell hell, anyways um (laughs) so um one thing that'll make me happy and not sad like the teletubbies (laughs) is if you go on to apple podcasts and give us a five-star review or whatever they're calling it this week as Mike, yes. as Mike is maybe is they're calling say. it Sad Teletubbies. Sad, yeah, <laughs> Sad Teletubbies podcast. Sad. That'll be our new show. Actually, it's going to be we're just going to be crying while watching Teletubbies. Teletubbies. It's not even a podcast. It's just like a <laughs> we're gonna you're gonna film us watching Teletubbies and and being yeah. sad. Yeah, it'll it'll so. be a new new form of therapy. It'll be called the Telebuddies. <laughs> If you want to see that, let us know. My name is Mike at CullenPark.com if you want to email me. Anyways. Um, and you can contact me by, and you can't really. but Carrier um, Pigeon. Yeah, Carrier Pigeon or, yeah. or a, um, or a, uh, God damn, what they call it in Harry Potter? I'm like Harry Potter fiend. How am I, how am I, forget, the owls, owl post. There we go, owl post. Yes. God damn it. Mm-hmm. I almost felt Teletubby sad for you, Matt, yeah, because yeah. I couldn't remember that. I know. And- yeah. No, so um, I've only read those books like over like seven times, but apparently I'm okay. You got to read them eight now. Yep. Okay. Anyways, so um, anything else you got to say? Would you recommend this movie to anybody, Matt? First off, before just we go? like to make fun of it, like we are. But yeah. then again, though, you have to weigh in the consequences of being angry. What was one good thing about the movie, Matt? <clears throat> like the few lines here and there that I can't remember. Yes, I don't remember what I they know. were. I remember they were like a little bit. Okay, and but they they pass so quickly, and then it went right into another shitty scene. So I don't remember. I think the cameramen knew how to turn on the cameras. Okay, that's cool. So they got that down. Yeah, and they put it on film or tape or digital or digital or whatever. By the way, did the Asian woman even have a name in this movie? I don't know. That was that was used girlfriend. And was she working with him that whole time? That's what I'm wondering. Or was Maybe she, she a was. Student? I don't know. That's a good question. Because I'm trying to remember if she was with him at the end. Her when... name was uh, 
Dong Mei. Oh, that's right. She did introduce herself to him yeah. that one time. That was it. Or though. Dong Mi. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that was like a pun I, for a dong or something. I don't know. But anyways. <sighs> oh, yeah. Probably some transphobic humor in there, too. Or something like that. No, I don't. I don't I, I'm, or, or maybe it was like dong me. Like, hey, you should dong me. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Anyways, um, so. <laughs> well, every time he was looking down at her, he'd be like, whoa. You know, so I don't know if that was meant to be like, oh, you get it? She's got a dick, you know, type of bullshit. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't get that really. But well, you know. at that point, you actually. Oh, I was. To, le- I had to leave the room for you a minute. You had to fix yeah. the air conditioner or whatever. Yes. Or, yes. So, I, I, I was so enthralled with this movie that I decided to fix my air conditioner. Well, you didn't fix it. You know what I mean. <laughs> I know. No, but I'm just saying. <laughs> you checked on it. <laughs> yes. I think you missed that scene. I don't know. Who it's cares? Okay. Anyway, so. Um, I'm yeah. just saying, usually with homophobia, you usually are not that far from. The yeah, transphobia, so yeah, like, in yeah. 2009 at least. Yeah, um, exactly. Anyways, um, so <clears throat> yeah, so don't watch this movie, folks, unless you have some buddies if, you want to watch it with. Yeah, don't watch it alone. Yeah, because that would be Teletubby mm. sad. That would be very <laughs> Teletubby sad. <laughs> yes. Don't drink while watching it either. You'll be really sad at that yeah, point. So it'd be just... very Tinky Winky sad. Yes. And um. <laughs> But don't be tinky winky sad and, um, no. you know, be sure to, like I said, uh, leave us a five star review. Let us know if you have anything, you know, if, if you leave us a review, um, we are going to pick anybody that leaves us a review. We're going to pick one person to officially get a T-shirt or a whatever you want off of our uh, off of our T public. So make sure you check that out, too. That's going to be in our uh, in our little uh, show notes. Mm. Woo! But for right now. We've been talking for almost an hour, so we should Jesus probably Christ. say Nationwide is on your side. <laughs> That's terrible. Mm. Let's do it again. Nationwide, Nationwide is on your side. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.